Samuel Taylor Coleridge's Life is a 15-line, three-stanza poem about, well, life. It is about Coleridge experiencing and realizing the infinite nature of what is and about what we as human beings call life on Earth. There are two websites, both called poemhunter.com. One is www. the other is rss. that hosts the poem itself for reading, but there are no other ideas or summaries mentioned online, other than the comments under the poem online, praising or critiquing this or that word or phrase. Coleridge speaks about traveling through nature and seeing an otter in the small home with the stream it occupies. Seeing the otter survive in such a small space in nature changes Coleridge's thoughts on the scenario. Coleridge further begins to experience more majesty in nature. The verdant green nature of the wood, meadow, hill, and steep fill his vision and his mind with delight. Coleridge claims, finally, that he wishes for the wisdom and knowledge of life itself to fill his mind and imagination when he must experience the unfortunate human experience of death. As late, I journeyed over the extensive plain, where native otter sports a scanty stream, musing in torpid woe with sister's pain, the glorious prospect woke me from the dream. At every step it widened to my sight, wood, meadow, verdant hill, and dreary steep, following in one quick succession of delight, till all at once did my eye ravished sweep. May this, I cried, my course through life betray, new scenes of wisdom may each step display, and knowledge open as my days advance, till what time death shall pour the undarkened ray, my eyes shall dart through infinite expanse, and thought suspended lie in rapture's blissful trance. Stanza 1, Coleridge is saying, Lately, I've traveled over a large area of flat land with few trees, as late I journeyed over the extensive plain, where the naturally occurring otter displays its home, a small and low amount of stream where native otter sports a scanty stream. In a period of reflection and mentally and physically inactive thought, the great sorrow and distress I felt looking at your limited home space of the stream made me feel great compassion for you, as a sister would grieve for a human sibling who is experiencing the same limited housing, musing in torpid woe with sister's pain. Yet seeing the otter swim and live changed me. The admirable idea of the otter living in such a small space woke me from the thoughts I was experiencing before of the otter not having enough space to survive. The glorious prospect woke me from the dream. In stanza two, Coleridge says, With every step I took, at every step it widened to my sight, the idea of life becoming more expansive to my mind and eyes. I saw an area of land that was smaller than a forest capable with growing trees. I saw pieces of low ground near rivers that were flat and capable of growing hay. I saw a naturally raised area of land that was not as high as a mountain, but was green with grass and other vegetation. And I saw dull and depressing slopes that rise and fall, wood, meadow, verdant hill, and dreary steep. My mind and I see and experience these earthly heavens quickly, one after the other, following in quick succession of delight, until all at once my mind and eyes filled with intense delight watching these simple green areas where life is abundant, till all at once did my eye ravished sweep. Stanza 3, Coleridge says, May these places and their life energies depict themselves in my winding life. May this, I cried, my course through life portray. I hope that new occurrences of experience, good judgment, and knowledge will show themselves with every step I take. New scenes of wisdom may each step display. And I hope awareness, familiarity, facts, information, and skills are further available to be understood as I grow in age, and knowledge open as my days advance. Until whenever death shall share its slow touch, like a darkened star spreading its darkness and corruption through evil hate beams, as the opposite of a sunbeam providing life, till what time death shall pour the undarkened ray, my mind and imagination will jump into and experience the infinitely continuing areas of green and verdant land filled with life, 
my eye shall dart through infinite expanse. And those thoughts will hang on to the extremely joyful, half-conscious mind, filled and filling it forever with intense pleasure and joy, and thoughts suspended lie in rapture's blissful trance. With the detailed analysis of the poem fully finished, I can now prove the aforementioned ideas of Coleridge traveling through nature and seeing an otter in the small home of the stream it occupies. As well, I can now prove that Coleridge seeing the otter survive in such a small space in nature changed Coleridge's thoughts on the scenario he was witnessing of the otter not having enough space to survive or live. Furthermore, I can prove that Coleridge also began to experience more majesty in nature after that thought. The verdant and green nature of the wood, meadow, hill, and steep filled his vision, his mind, and his eyes with delight. Finally, I can now prove that Coleridge claimed he was wishing for the wisdom and knowledge of life itself to fill his mind and imagination when he must experience the unfortunate human experience of death.